the Powerball Drawing Live tonight here on TV23. Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Hump Day. It's Wednesday, October 14th, 2015. Welcome to High Plains Today on TV23. On today's show, I'll be joined by Ryan Osmus. He is the Dean of Instruction and Outreach at Dodge City Community College. We're going to look at Title V and some other stuff that they have going on up there. Well, let's take a look at some news. Well, the Kansas Highway Patrol says a 23-year-old man was killed in an accident Tuesday afternoon. It happened around 2.30 p.m. on Highway 50. Now, according to the Highway Patrol, a 2002 Chevy Trailblazer was westbound on Highway 50 when it left the right side of the road and began to roll. The crash killed Yusef Ibrahim, a passenger. A driver and three passengers were transported to the Garden City Hospital for their injuries, and two were later flown to Wesley Medical Center in Wichita to be treated. All five people in the trailblazer were from Garden City. And on Monday at approximately 8.36 p.m., emergency responders were dispatched to 1350 Jewel Avenue in Liberal for a reported injury accident where a vehicle had struck a house and the driver was not breathing. Responding officers arrived to find a 36-year-old female passenger standing at the driver's side door uh, attempting chest compressions on the driver. The driver was later identified as 36-year-old Dusty Fowler. Officers immediately began life-saving efforts by giving him CPR until Seward County EMS arrived. Fowler was transported to the Southwest Medical Center in serious condition where he later died. And a 46-year-old Garden City man and a 53-year-old Shawnee woman were injured Monday in a one-car accident at 5.50 p.m. about 10 miles northwest of Garden City. According to the Kansas Highway Patrol, Coral J. Klitsky, 53 of Shawnee, was traveling westbound on West Six Mile Road when her vehicle left the road and struck the driveway at 4615 West Six Mile Road and then went airborne. Upon impact, the car rolled one time and came to rest facing eastbound in the North Ditch. Klitsky and her passenger, 46-year-old Cliff Bullock of Garden City, were then taken to St. Catherine Hospital. And a 17-year-old Garden City woman was injured Monday afternoon when her vehicle left the roadway on the left side, vaulted over a driveway, and struck a power pole approximately four miles west of Holcomb. According to the Kansas Highway Patrol, Vanessa Herrera was traveling eastbound in the 10,000 block of West River Road when the accident occurred around 12.50 p.m. Herrera was also transported to St. Catherine Hospital. State Representative Russ Jennings, Republican from Lakin, has filed for re-election to the Kansas House of Representatives for the 122nd District, which includes Greeley, Hamilton, Kearney, Binney, and Haskell Counties. Elected in 2012 and re-elected in 2014, Jennings is completing his second term in office. He serves as the Vice Chairman of the Transportation and Public Safety Budget Committee and as a member of Energy and Corrections and Juvenile Justice Committees. And finally, legislation blocking states and municipalities from requiring genetically modified food be labeled as such is languishing in the U.S. Senate. The Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act, H.R. 1599, passed the House by a vote of 275 to 150 back on July 23rd. The bill's sponsor, Republican Representative Mike Pompeo of South Central Kansas, said he has not been able to find a Democrat to co-sponsor a Senate version of the bill. The bill would require the vote of at least a half dozen Democratic senators to pass. Only after a hearing on the safety of GMO food will the Agriculture Committee, which is chaired by Senator Pat Roberts, will consider a Senate version of Pompeo's bill. And that's a look at some of the stuff that's happening around out there. Stick around. I'll be back with a look at weather after this. Watching High Plains today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve, service you expect. United Wireless.
You want to feel connected, at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here, at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters, we investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. And here I am. Look at that. It is a very nice day out there. No clouds in the sky. Looking northeast off the TV 23 tower cam. Let's take a look at our readings here at the station. 74 degrees. Relative humidity, not too bad. 34%. Winds are out of the east southeast at 9. Barometric pressure holding, you can see, steady. Let's take a look at our temperatures around the area. Now, you can see there is a cold front that's, uh, well, it's kind of a low trough that's sneaking in out here because you can see Lamar is still at 65 degrees, Garden City at 68. Everybody else is creeping up into the 70s, including Perryton now 81 degrees. Dew points are pretty low. Everybody pretty much in the 30s and 40s, except for Lamar out here at 28. That would be why the humidity is so low. And you can see where that front is kind of sneaking through here. You can see we're still got winds out of the west and the north, northwest out to the west of us. Everybody else out of the east, northeast or the east, southeast. It's really whipping around because that trough sliding through. And then let's look at our highs and lows. As recorded at the Garden City Municipal Airport yesterday, the high was 91. I didn't think it got that hot, but it did. Record of 95 back in 1968. 43 was a low overnight. 26 back in 1968. Yep, no measurable percentage in the bucket. Let's take a look at our forecast for today. 83 degrees. Winds are going to be out of the east southeast at 8. Tonight, 50 for the low. Winds are still going to be out of the southeast at 8 miles an hour. Tomorrow, 81. It's going to maybe be our last warm day for a few days. Winds are going to shift around to the north northeast and then tomorrow night we start to cool down. Clouds are going to roll in. 45 degrees. Winds out of the northeast at 20. As we look at the seven day, you can see it. Yep, there it is. 64 on Friday, so when you head out that football game on Friday night, you're probably going to want to throw in a hoodie or a coat or something. Got a few clouds hanging around. Otherwise, we're going to start to gradually warm up again starting Saturday. You have a 20% chance sneaking in on Tuesday. Otherwise, lows are going to pretty much be pretty steady in the 40s and 50s. That's a look at the weather. Stick around. The markets are coming up next. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? 
Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys did know? Did you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. I'm now joined on set by Mr. Ryan Osmus. He is the Dean of Instruction and Outreach at, I'm going to say it because everybody I talk to at Dodge City Community College calls it DC3. <laughs> yes. Right? 
That's exactly that's correct. Even your that. emails are all DC three. Your it's website's DC three. Been that ever since I can remember. Really? Even when I yeah, I, I was actually a student there year, years ago at this <laughs> point. But yeah, it's always been DC three. Well, so. hey, it makes it easy spelling if you can't go C <laughs> yeah. C C. And I use that a lot. Just the okay. DC and the three. Yeah, all I sure right. do. Yeah. Okay. So deed of instruction and outreach. What all does that entail? Yeah, there's uh, several components to my <laughs> to my job title. Uh, the instruction would be part of the, the academics. Uh, I, I deal a lot with our uh, guided studies program, which is distance learning. So giving individuals an opportunity to accumulate some college credits without actually having to come to campus and take, and take, uh, take uh, 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 classes. I also do our adult learning center, which is our GED and uh, English as a second language uh, uh, program. And there's a few other uh, programs I'm involved in. Those are probably the two biggest that would be on the instruction side. As far as outreach, that is our, our dual credit, our concurrent enrollment uh, program is the technical name for it. So we work with uh, 13, 14 area high schools in a nine county um, area, just creating opportunities for high school students to be able to go to high school while at the same time accumulating some, some uh, college credit. So when they enter college, technically as a first year freshman or so, sure. you know, they've already got several uh, hours and credits under their belt, cuts down on cost and the amount of time that they spend in college, giving them those opportunities to be able to do some of that in high school. You're a busy guy. I'm extremely busy. You're a busy so, guy. Yeah, and then, and then the other thing we're probably going to speak about also Title Five. Yeah, I was going to so, say. Plus, you're in charge of the Title Five deal. Yeah, exactly. So that's another thing that's on uh, that I'll be um, uh, managing over the next uh, several years. Yeah, most some of the got several things going on at the college, but receiving the Title Five awards is probably the most exciting bit of news we've we've gotten so far this academic year. So we're really excited about that. We were awarded uh, Title Five monies. That is a uh, oh, excuse me, a, uh, goodness gracious, uh, Department of Education uh, grant. We were awarded about $2.6 million over the next five years. And so we just uh, got word of that two weeks ago. That technically just started October 1st. So we'll be implementing uh, all kinds of different uh, programs and things with those Title V monies, and we're really excited about the opportunity to have received that grant. So who's, in, who's eligible f to use the Title V grant money? I mean... As far who who are you going to reach out yeah, on that, those? That's an excellent question because in order to receive Title V monies, you have to be designated as an HSI, which is a Hispanic Serving Institution. Dot City Community College presently, in order in order to be designated as, as an HS, HSI, your uh, enrollment, Hispanic enrollment, needs to be twenty five percent or larger. We're sitting right now at about thirty six or thirty seven percent. So it really is geared towards equipping our Hispanic students um, academically. However. We previously received the Title V grant. This has been several years now. That Title V grant helped us build our ASC, our Academic Success Center. All of our tutoring services and things of that nature are run out of that department. And at this point, it's institutionalized. And so all of our student body can take um, advantage of that, of that department. Get any, we, and we offer tutoring services for just about any class or program we have on campus. So it will start out as, a, as an initiative geared towards our uh, Hispanic students, but as it becomes to institutionalize itself, because it's a five-year grant, starting in year three, college will start absorbing some of those programs we put in place. And then as we move forward, um, sometime within that three to five-year period and beyond, um, all students throughout the, the campus will be able to take advantage of, of those services. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm sure there was a mountain of paperwork to do for that. Yeah, that was a very, yeah, that grant was, was some uh, about, yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, okay. That was yeah, about yeah. that thing. All kinds of legwork going into so, that. All right, so you talk about the types of program. What types of programs yeah. are you guys going to be initiating that, I mean, and these are going to be new to yeah, brand new. City Community College. And, and unlike our previous Title V, where, where it was really geared towards uh, tutoring services, this one's going to have many more, a lot more moving parts to it than that grant. Uh, some of the things that we'll be initiating is we're going to be taking a look at some of our developmental ed courses, which is really going to be the English, the math, and we're going to be doing some curriculum redesign. So there's monies in Title V for us to take a look at our developmental education and see if we want to uh, revamp or go in a little bit different direction as it relates to what we're doing, um, doing there. We're also going to do a little something different with our advising. I started at the college actually, uh, actually as an academic advisor, so I've held a few different positions with them, but I'll never forget a story. A student came to me one time asking me about, you know, uh, one for sure what they wanted to do, you know, what I kind of thought, and I can remember telling them, of course, I'd handle it different now, but I said, hey, I can help you enroll in classes. I can tell you what you need to do to complete a degree, but I'm not a life coach. 
So <laughs> I'll never forget that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have now some uh, career counseling services through this new Title V to help students kind of find their way, if you will, not just stick them in a class or two and kind of say, good luck and maybe you'll figure it out. So we're going to really concentrate on some career uh, uh, counseling. So some curriculum redesign, some career counseling. Those are going to be two major areas of focus, along with a couple other things that we have have in mind, but really doing something different with the way that we advise students and then as well as with some of our, our curriculum. So we're really excited about those opportunities. So with the curriculum and those types of things, do you foresee now, are, are, are a lot of these going to be geared towards a two-year degree or are some of them going to be geared towards moving on to a four-year school? Now, the career counseling piece will include the moving students into the, into the four-year programs or if they're just interested in getting into the workforce, start kind of helping them find their way through that kind of stuff. But the curriculum redesign will concentrate with what we have going on on our campus and our developmental ed. Um, uh, courses. So, yeah, because develop because for English and math, and it's across Kansas, I, I I believe. I don't think I miss speaking on that. It'd be Seward, Garden City, any of the community colleges. Students have to uh, are placed into uh, English and math uh, college level courses. So, if we have a student come in, and right now we're using Compass, depending on where a student may uh, test on Compass, they, let's they may not test into college algebra. So, uh, we want to obviously not just them push them aside, we want to do what we can to prepare them to get to that college level course. So we'll put them in a developmental ed course. And we have a few different levels of, of uh, dev ed. And so we need to make sure that our students are being successful in those, those developmental ed courses. So when they get to those college level courses, obviously they're prepared, ready to pass, and then continue to move on in their, in their track. Now you guys at, at DC3 also have a lot of classes involved in your tech school. Yes. Now, will any of this carry over? I mean, will any of this be steered towards the tech school at all or not? No, as of, as of right now, there are no major plans to do anything with our technical college at this at this point in, uh, in time. Just really geared towards our, our developmental ed and some of our career counseling. That's Well, and that career counseling will have some crossover with the technical education programs. Mm -hmm. But as far as doing any kind of redesign in our, in our technical education with any of their uh, curriculum or anything like that. There's no plans at this time to uh, to do any any of that. So will any of this? Okay, and you you are in charge of the outreach program as well. Yes. Now, will any of this spread over into the outreach into some of these outlying high schools as well to draw those yeah. students into Dodge City Community the College? Outlying high schools really most of those students, the majority of the students that are in the in the area high schools that are taking uh, dual credit courses, they're they're taking college level courses. They're really not. Um, uh, taking any of our developmental ed ed courses. Most of the courses, almost 100% of the courses they're taking are college level courses, which counts towards a degree or certificate at Dodd City Community College, which will also transfer out to a four-year school if they, if they choose to do that. So um, it really won't have any impact on our, on our area high schools as it relates to the dual credit enrollment program. Oh, so you're just going to add the Title V stuff to your title and you're just going to keep going on and not have much to do, right? Yeah, yeah, not much to do at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it's exciting times. We've got a lot going on at Dodd City uh, Community College, so I'm uh, really honored that we received these Title V monies. I'm looking forward to being a part of that and seeing how we can grow that and help our student body. Yeah, that's kind of a neat successful. deal that you got going on. Yeah, yeah. it well, is. It's wonderful. So, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited, all the things I'm involved in, but I'm really looking forward to getting this Title V uh, moving forward. As I said, it's only been a couple of weeks, so... We'll get that moving uh, forward. Maybe I can come back and give you a give You me can. I was going to say, you need to come back in six months or so. Come back in the spring. Let me know how things are going. Awesome. I look forward to All it. All right, Ryan, thanks for taking Thank the time. Thank you very to much. I appreciate it. today. Thank you. We know each other from some yeah. other things. So anyway, <laughs> stick around. I'll be back with more right after this.
Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kdgltv.com. feel connected, informed, included, inspired. So when important things happen, we're here. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. On every screen in your life. We are broadcasters. Always here for you. Wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. And welcome back. Hey, let's take a look at some baseball news because there's a bunch of it going on. Clayton Kershaw ended his five-game postseason skid with seven brilliant innings while pitching on three days rest. And the Dodgers beat the Mets last night 3-1 to one, to force a deciding Game 5 in the National League Division Series. Now the series shifts back to Dodger Stadium tomorrow. And guess what? The Chicago Cubs clinched a post season series at Wrigley Field. Now that is the first time ever getting home runs from Kyle Schwarber, Anthony Rizzo, and Javier Baez in beating the Cardinals 6-4 last night to win the National League Division Series in four games. Wrigley Field hosted its first Cubs game in 1916, eight years after they last won the World Series. And the Texas Rangers have won their last 11 games started by Cole Hamels. They need each of those victories to get this far. And their season will be over without one, another one today against Toronto in a decisive Game 5 of the American League Division Series. And don't forget, the Royals traded away three top prospects to acquire Johnny Cueto for the playoffs, even though his winning pedigree has been established almost entirely in the regular season. He'll have an opportunity to change that Wednesday night. Now, he goes, so well, that'll be tonight. He goes against... The uh, Astros tonight in Game 5 at Kauffman Stadium. Hopefully, we'll get a win. And let's take a look at our weather one last time before we get out of here. Guess what? Temperature 76 degrees. Relative humidity 32%. Winds are out of the east-southeast today. Barometric pressure holding steady. Looking at our seven-day today, tomorrow, going to be pretty nice. Going to cool off drastically on Friday as a cold front slides down into Kansas. 64 degrees for the high, then we'll get back up into the 70s. Maybe a 20% chance of rain on Tuesday. Go out and make it a good Wednesday, everybody. Call your cable operator. See you back here tomorrow. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 88. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Right 